night live from Melbourne, which means that we're able to bring you some very special acts, including our next guest. See, the idea of putting sport and comedy together isn't new. Collingwood have been doing it for nearly 100 years now. <laughs> and true students of the field of sport and comedy will know that the undisputed stayers are the ABC radios could have been champions. Since 1981, they've been making Australians laugh at sport. I mean, really laugh, belly laughs, like the one we all gave out when Ian Botham was out for a duck in the World Cup <laughs> final. Every Sunday evening, over a quarter of a million listeners tune into the Coulda Beans to sample their many delights, chief amongst which is our next guest, the singing Coulda Bean, the minstrel of Australian sport, Greg Champion. <laughs> Welcome. Oh, what an unfortunate start, but we'll push on from that. Of course, radio microphones problem, yes. Now, uh, Greg, probably your biggest hit is I Made 100 in the Backyard at Mum's. Mm. Did you, ever? Didn't make the 100. Uh, I think 70, to be fair, was the closest I got. Well, 70 is pretty good. I li yeah, I lied, to be honest, Andrew. Oh. Uh, well, look, you've got to make these things up to, to have a hit. Oh, I see. And, and that's what you did, is essentially, yeah. Well, uh, I got lucky with the song, uh, you know, a national radio program on the ABC picked it up and... Uh, and uh, Gee, that must have captured a big audience. <laughs> well, in, that, in his case, he has to, up to a, a million and a half listeners. Ian McNamara is a straight oh, yeah. over. Oh. As opposed to some national radio programs. Or TV programs. For that matter. Uh, yes. He has by far the largest listening audience of anything. Of can any kind. We, can we get Ian McNamara on the show? <laughs> Sorry, Greg, thanks very much. It's been good having you. <laughs> very racing. But, okay, you, won't, you did make a hundred in the backyard uh, at Mum's, but you've basically made a living, crafted a living out of sending up your stars. Out of, I, and idolising them as well. I mean... Yeah, well, footy stars uh, uh, are there to, be, uh, to mock, be mocked, and thankfully they take it the right way. And, uh, Do they? Yes. Did uh, Dermot Brereton really like Dermy Brereton as a hood? Funny you should ask. Yeah. <laughs> no, Dermy is a good example of someone who sees the right, the funny side of things. And Dermy was there the first day I, was, I, I made up and sang that song, and he laughed all the way through it. And that just goes to show what a big drop kick he really is. <laughs> <laughs> Dermy, could you give it? Yeah, hi Dermy. Could you give us a, a few example, uh, an example of that one? Uh, For those who don't know it, so. Listen to Robbie Flower was a champion, Rioli was a star, but they don't break legs like big Paul Vanderhaar. Tell me Alvin is a beauty, Mark our Siri is reasonably good, Jimmy Jess is Jimmy Jess, but Dermot Brereton is a hood. <laughs> now Dermot Brereton is a hood, Dermot Brereton is a hood. A bloke that comes from Frankston, never be any good I wouldn't try to tell you as if I didn't think I should he's your classic Aussie knucklehead Dermot Brereton is a hood he's your great big hairy monster Dermot Brereton is a hood oh some booing there we have uh and we, I, must, I must say, Andrew, yeah. about that song, we did it once for the Good Friday appeal for ch uh, Channel <coughs> uh, The Square Root of 49 TV network. Those greedy bastards, yes! And, uh, and Dermy, Dermy was uh, contrived to chase me around the studios, yes. and he did say to me before the program, do you think you could just change that line about the classic Aussie knucklehead? So he, he, he had thought that yeah. maybe that was a little close to bone, but to be, to be fair to him and to David Rhys-Jones... Yes. Uh, they, they're very, very kind and understanding. And Dermy did say to me, it doesn't matter what they're singing as long as they're singing about you. And I've taken that as carte blanche to really yeah, go, go for it. it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and what a good thing, too. Because you do ha have a song for every occasion, don't you? I, I, one of your classics was commemorating the old Seoul Olympics, the Alex Watson incident. Is that a cue to... Uh... No, no, no. Actually, I was actually... No, please, go right ahead. God, you try and be smooth, try and be professional, the guy just dumps all over you. Time's up. Olympic Games. When you're competing in Seoul and you're going for gold, <laughs> caffeine. <laughs> The fencing today, break out the Nescafe. <laughs> when you're 
chasing your dreams, you need those 43 beans. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. Idea. And I'd just like to point out any resemblance to tunes living or dead is purely coincidental, yes. yes. And to athletes. Mm. Oh, absolutely, yes. Now, of course, this kind of uh, acoustic guitar solo act thing is what you're famous for, but it's not all that you've done. Do you recognise the man in the blue suit in this clip? Isn't that the terrible thing about your past? It just doesn't go away. You... No, actually... Can I see some more of that? Yes. No, we've just had 400 complaints. Uh, yes. <laughs> what, are, what is the story there? Because I don't actually know... Is no that... comment. I cannot say laws of life will prevent me. I don't speak to my lawyers. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, it, were they the band... in that group there with you? <laughs> the band was called the... Oh, I didn't know you were going to do that. The band was the Young Home Buyers. Yeah. Uh, we were around in 1982. Yeah. Uh, we had a... We... We had an album. Well, he's choking up now. <laughs> we had an album that, as we say in the business, stiffed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it made uh, about number 48 and sunk without a trace. Yeah, yeah. Young Home Buys was a cry from the wilderness by a lost and lonely bunch of young uh, avant-garde thinkers. Yes, well, no, it, it, looked, um, it looked great. Um, got, actually, one thing, you've had several groups, haven't you, with great names. You had the Young Home Buyers, the, the Fabulaires. Uh, what's your group called? Uh, the moment? Maniac Rockers from Hell. Yes. The Flying Showbags. <laughs> The, the free-range yodelers, mm -hmm. the huge sense of guilt, <laughs> the eternal struggle between the forces of good and evil. Yes. I think they're fairly sensible names. Yeah, they are, really, yeah. Any names you've ever rejected on the grounds that they're not silly enough? Oh, absolutely not. The Important Brothers is the current band, mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, no, we just like to, like to keep, it, uh, keep it stupid. Yes. And of course, country and Western, strangely enough, this, uh, this man is a man of many talents, is actually your true love, isn't it? No, Country and Western oh. is a... <laughs> I'm just, I'm giving up on this interview, Kate. I was going to be incisive here. <laughs> no, Country, we call it Country, Andrew. Now, Do we? You, you, you ought not to say Country and Western in Australia. Country and Western is an American concept. Uh -huh. And uh, now, if Willow heard you there, you know, if Willow was watching... Oh, John Williams. Yeah, yeah Will, I knew that. Willow to his mate. Yeah. He would, cr he would cringe because... Did he do Old Man Emu? Yes, but he'd prefer you forgot that. Um, but da, 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 yes. There's been that's about, country, that's Australian country, yeah. Yeah, there's been about 12 albums since then. Yeah, yeah, but that that's man. the one he's remembered. Oh, before, no, yeah. True Blue and... <laughs> <laughs> Who can forget Rip, Trip, Rip, Trip, Blip, Wood Chip? Yeah, you can, apparently. What I'm, um... No, what... it's called country. Yeah. And uh, I am involved in the country music industry in Australia. I understand that, and... I've actually had to pick up my notepad here because I can't remember. These are the titles of some of your songs. Old Station Wagon with the lights on out the front. Full Time in the Football Stadium of Our Hearts. And I've been to Wangaratta and that's far enough for me. <laughs> now, is it a law in country music that you have to have a title of ten words or more? Is this... Uh, I'll be honest with you. I seem to work from long song titles. Long phrases seem to capture the imagination. And I made a hundred in the backyard at Mum's is a good early example. And, and long phrases seem to uh, get me going. And so I guess there are other examples. He ain't pretty, he's James Manson. <laughs> Kim Hughes has got the blues. Yasser Arafat has a funny hat. <laughs> I'm going to fax you and tell you that I love you. Now, hang on. Is, is this an answer or is this the title of another song? These are other songs. Oh, I see, right. I right. thought that might have been all one big title. And there's one other song that uh, made up for... Uh, it was a, a, a love song, for, no, it was a gospel song for the yuppie crowd called When the Lord Closes the Door, He Opens the Sunroof. That's very beautiful. Well, the song you're going to sing for us right now has a much shorter title. Greg, if you'd like to take your minstrel position. Pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, please settle back in your lounge rooms for Greg Champion from the Could Have Been Champions with his hit, Red Hot Go. Okay, folks, you know what to do, Al? <laughs> we were playing footy for the Kuda Beans in our annual match against Salamarine. We were getting flogged, things are pretty crook. Now, don't let me down, now. When someone yelled out, take a good hard look. What do we do? Well, we TTC. Turn the corner! RHG. Red Hot Go! Yeah, we OTFG. Oh, oh, we 
got V I T. Back it down. Here we are. L O G. Took a good hard look at ourselves. The coach came out. O U T. Said you J G. Just go. And made a B S. B Said it's a W N B G. Hold you more. Said you L D B. Looking down the barrel. Take a G H L A Y. Yeah, we T T C. Turn the corner. Had a R H G. Red light go. Yeah, we O T F G. Open the floodgates. We got B I T. Back in town. Yeah, we L O G. Lifted our game. Took a good hard look at ourselves. My game had been bad, B-A-D, in fact it had an A-S, absolute shocker. The coach pulled me out, O-U-T, he said I had an A-P, attitude problem, you T-Y-B, dropped your bundle, take a G-H-L-A-Y, so we T-T-C, turned the corner, had a R-H-G, red heart go, yeah we T-C-A-P, through the cat amongst the pit. Through the cat amongst the pigeon. We got B I T back in town. Yeah, we S T D spat the dummy. I took a good hard look at ourselves. The coach turned to me, M E. He said, I don't want N N. I don't want a P T F. I don't want a D O I. I don't want a S A O. But Y K W Y A. You know who you are. So we TTC, turn the corner, had a R-H-G, red light go, here we O-T-F-G. Open the floodgates, we got B-I-T, back in town, here we S-T-T, set the down. We took a good hard look at ourselves. We were H&H, home and home. It was an H-H-G. Happy honey brown. We T-N-F-S. Gross our pants in front of the selectors. We got BTB, we were OTGs, we CPI, captured the public's imagination, TLTB, thank you Weissman, thank you all boys, we TDG, we RULS, just made that one up, <laughs> and took a good hard look at ourselves, we gave it EPC, Every your HCBT, we had an RHG, Red and took a good hard look at Damn, this let's do a five-hour telecast. How many other times? Greg Champion, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, Greg. You must come back. It'll be great to have you back. In fact, hopefully later in the year we'll have the whole Coulda Beans gang on. But in the meantime, it's over to the Jack Newton Memorial Eyeball with engraving, as recommended by Ian Stanley. Karen Ty with the sports.